Hello, I'm Doug and this is the Taste and Sensibility channel. And today on Brie Like Cheese number 19, we're looking at a French Brie Like Cheese called Camembert. This is from Normandy, the traditional region for Camembert. And this one is from Hervé Mans, a cheesemaker in Normandy. And it says exclusively through Whole Foods. So they seem to do a lot of deals with Whole Foods and ship their whole supply of some specialty cheese there. So it comes in a nice little wood box. It's about eight ounces. Let me see for sure. 8.5 ounces, 241 grams. And it's in a little wooden box because Brie's and similar cheeses can get really runny as they get older. So I'm going to pull this out. It's in a little waxed paper type thing. It's got a little wrapper. So we'll get opening and smelling and tasting. So let's see if there's an expiration date or a use by, sell by, anything, anything. Best before 721. That's a couple weeks out in the future. So I don't think I'm in any danger of surprises. Let's see, it looks pretty normal. There is a white rind, as is typical, and this has been approaching room temperature for quite a while now. It's been out of the fridge a couple hours. I did not detect much chill on it at all. So it's a little funky, mushroomy. Mmm, maybe cabbagey. Cruciferous vegetables with that sulfury aroma. So this particular cheese is sort of mentioned in Liz Thorpe's book, The Book of Cheese. In her Brie chapter, one of the last ones she has is Camembert de Normandy, PDO, and a lot of those cheeses can't be imported into the U.S. because they are not pasteurized and then they're aged less than 60 days. But this particular one from Hervé Mons, this is listed in her chapter. It's cow milk. It is like third on the list in terms of intensity. And overall, this group is uh, on her intense end of the scale for flavors. So we will see what we find here. This ought to be readily available in the U.S. if you have a Whole Foods, if you're close to one. So I don't really get any surprising aromas here. Everything I smell today I've smelled before in Brie's and similar cheeses. So inside it's a little on the yellow side, a little creamy, looks like grass-fed cows. I have uh, donated this milk and it is holding together pretty well. It's not running out, it's not very fluid. So let's get tasting. Wow. It's got a fairly sturdy rind and uh yeah. Yeah, it's kind of tough in the center. It's not as loose and fluid as I thought it might be. Okay, I don't want that there. I need to put my knife in that corner. A little bit of grassy hay, rotting hay, about to rot hay, a little bit of wet dog or old socks, something along those lines. Not really strong. You have to go looking for it, but it's in there. Mmm. Okay, it's got a little, a few extra notes like those cruciferous vegetables. Cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. Sometimes when those are cooked they get a little sulfury and a little smelly. So it's like some of the strongest aromas you have smelled around those vegetables, especially when they're cooked. So that was a multi-grain cracker with no wheat. Here's kind of a, a club cracker, a Keebler club. So buttery.
There's the saltiness of the cheese. Mm, saltiness of the cracker. It's uh, it's not really fluid and smooth and creamy and silky, but there's definitely a, a double creme type mouthfeel to the to the fat level. A few dairy notes, but mostly the funkier side, the worst aromas of broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage that are cooked, which is not unappealing to me. It's not a negative, it's just a note that's in there. Oh, should have got my flatbread ready. Let's see if it breaks nicely. Oh, it did. So this will have the least salt of all my things here. All the bread maybe. Well, it tastes very salty. So this is uh, turning out pretty nice. Yeah, get the salt again. So if you put this on a cheese board with a few other things and some crackers and fruit, some people might take a taste and move on to something else and other people will keep eat eating on this. So I'd say this is at the uh, stronger end of the intensity scale for all those funky flavors. So the mildest double crown breeze that we have there domestic might be at the other end of the scale. This has a few more of those sulfury things. Which are not unpleasant to me today. Let's see what Liz says. What hay, mushroom and truffle. Texture springy, heavy and moist. Yeah, it is pretty springy and stretchy and tougher than I was expecting. Broccoli, rabe, and porcini cream. Proof that bitter can be sweet. So I'm not really getting bitter notes like bitter greens or I don't know exactly what she's referring to. But I'm liking this today. It's pretty good. Let's see, I'm going to put it on a little piece of a... Of a just a regular piece of bread. This is uh, something I just got out of the oven to warm it up. Well, I haven't done a much regular bread, so we'll see how that does. Mm. Tough crust. Mmm. It goes pretty well. There's not a saltiness in the bread, but the texture of the crispy crust and the moist interior is uh, really nice. And then the the cheese cheese notes are totally different than the bread. So, lots going on in this cheese. And most of it's to the more intense end of the spectrum. So I'm liking it, but maybe not everybody would. I'm going to do a little pairing experiment now. I'm going to put on some fresh apple. I've got a few chunks here. I want to use them before they turn brown. So it's just little wedges cut out of a slice. I'll put on a couple. So that'll be wetter and fruitier than the cheese or the cracker, for sure. Wow, the apple makes it through, but it heightens the sulfury notes. Sweetness or the wateriness or the lack of salt really contrasts with the cheese. It makes everything pop more, the salt and all the sulfur. Wow, I wasn't really expecting that. That's pretty interesting. And cherries and blueberries have always been successful with all the brie-like cheeses we've been doing. So let me throw a few dried blueberries over here from this corner. 
and I don't think they've ever failed. So there's four, four on this piece. So let's give that a try. Mmm. Slightly different things come out of the cheese with the blueberries on there. I didn't really interpret any of the sulfury notes as the strong, funky things. They didn't really come out. It was just a nice dairy, somewhat savory cheese character without the sulfur stuff. So that's interesting how it moderates that. Then one more thing might be pistachios. Nuts have been uh, hit and miss. Some of them are too mild to taste. Sometimes you need too many to be practical. Academia nuts are pretty mild. But these pistachios, well, they're salted for one thing. And you know, I'll go with four and see, see how that works. Fairly salty. Interesting combination. Everything goes well. Might not be for everybody. I get more of the sulfur stuff and the cheese with the pistachios there. So not a problem, but it's not really spectacular either. So, that's not bad. And then I brought in a red wine. Here, and I've already poured it, had it uh, airing out a little bit. Jean-Luc Colombo, a 2015 Syrah from France. Rhone Valley. It's all 100% Syrah. So, just a nice red. We'll see if it goes or if it clashes. So I think I'll sip, bite, and sip. Oh, it's got some berry things. Not very tanny from the skins. Nice and pleasant. King. Dairy nuts and a little bit of the sulfur. Only half the sulfur level that I was getting before from all the funky stuff. That goes perfectly fine. It's not a standout pairing, but it doesn't clash in any way, and everything gets along. So that's pretty good too. So Liz was right about this being slightly funky and on the more intense ends, but it was uh, generally things I liked. So I will finish this up and have a good time with it. So let me remind you to like and subscribe and leave comments, leave questions, and watch out for the new videos coming out on Mondays. So if you have a Whole Foods, you have access to this cheese and many others from Air of Moms. And sorry to all the French speakers for me butchering that language. But that will do it for this episode, so come back for more. And cheers.